So the reason why I'm making this video today is because I have now been working consistently for the past 10 years and, and throughout these 10 years of consistent training I've been making a lot of mistakes. Throughout the time I've been working as a personal trainer, I've been working as a coach and I've also been working as a nutritionist. And here are the things that I wish I would have known day number one. If I would have known these things from day number one, I would have made so freaking much progress. I don't want you to waste your time because I was making these mistakes and these mistakes were holding me back. These mistakes were making sure that I was not going from point A to point B. And these things are so freaking basic even though I was not doing them. So I can guarantee you that if you do these five things, you will make progress much faster. However, if you don't do these five things, you will be wasting a lot of your time. I'm not trying to sell you anything. The only reason why I'm making these videos is because I want you to become a better version of yourself. The person I'm trying to speak to right now is probably my 14 year old self. And I'm not going to type like basic things that, that you can just search on Google. You can pretty much Google today like, oh, what are the five most important things for making progress in the gym? And they're gonna be something like utilizing slow ranges of motion, utilizing a full range of motion, prioritizing combined movements over isolated exercises. They're so simple, they're so basic, but it has nothing to do with the training principles. Myself, I'm a natural guy. I've been natural my entire life. And if you're not natural, these things will still apply. They will make you even better as well. So here are the five things that I wish I would have done day number one. Stop thinking about what other people think about you because that is holding you back. No one is caring about what you're doing in the gym. And if they are, they will not make any progress themselves. You can't care about what other people do because if you do, that will hold you back. And you will be going in there with the mindset of, ah, I need to go for a PR every single time or I need to prove myself or something like that. You need to be willing to look stupid. If you're not willing to look stupid, you will never get there. And that took a lot for me to learn, but if you're not uncomfortable, you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough. The second thing that I think is the most important is to have a goal. If you don't have a goal, you'll never get anywhere. And that applies for everything in life. You need to have a goal. And if you haven't even set a goal yet, then start by setting a goal. I did the mistake in the past of thinking, okay, I'm just gonna get big. I just wanna get bigger. I got bigger. It took a long time. I would have gone there much faster if I would have set a specific goal and I would have set a deadline. I recommend setting a goal for 12 weeks and then adjusting if you don't actually get there. And by getting closer to that goal, day in and day out, you actually get some joy of walking into the gym and you're feeling pretty good about yourself because you're getting closer day in and day out. And therefore you get a little bit of a dopamine spike and that will encourage you to keep going. Rather that I can tell you straight away, if you right now, you don't have a goal, you don't have a purpose of walking into the gym, then you're gonna be wasting your time because you're gonna go in there, you don't even have a plan. Without having a plan, you're not gonna get anywhere. You, you, you're just guessworking. You're ne never gonna get there. And if you do get there, it will have taken you so freaking much longer. And I don't recommend you to following a Mr. Olympia or anything like that and just trying to do exactly what they're doing. Yes, it's great to emulate someone. It's great to try to do exactly what they're doing and you can learn a lot from doing that. But it's, it's like trying to paint a Picasso the first time you're painting. Like, that's not really gonna happen. You must learn how to use the brush before you're trying to paint a Picasso. This is something that I realized myself and it was actually a very good thing. Obviously in the beginning of the workout, you are the most pumped. You're not mostly the most pumped, but you have, theoretically speaking, the most amount of energy for the training. So this means that you can probably put your hardest priority movement in the beginning because you have the most amount of energy. When you do this, this is the only movement that theoretically speaking, you should track. If you need to track anything, you should track the first movement. The first compound movement or whatever movement you're deciding to get better at, is probably the movement that you should track. Now, you can obviously track all of your workout, but if you don't track and you want to start tracking, then I recommend you're starting off by tracking the first movement, becoming very good at tracking the first movement, and that way, every single time you have a purpose. Every single time you're walking into the gym, you know what you do, and there's no messing around. Every single time you don't get through that workout, you know that today I could have pushed myself a bit harder. Every single time you're getting better or you're getting worse or you need to recover. Like 
you will know because you're tracking your first movement. So if you're brand new to tracking, I don't recommend you to track everything that you're doing because that's too much and most likely you won't do it. And if you do, maybe you manage to track it, but maybe you just managed to track it for two months. That's not good enough. You want to be able to track for your entire life. So try to track, but try to track the first movement to begin with and do that really, really well. And do that two years, do that for five years. And after you've done that, then maybe start implementing the second movement. If you're doing it this way, you will actually feel like, ah, you know what? I tracked my first movement. I made progress this week. I made progress today. And what you can do then is that maybe, you know what? Let's focus on something that I feel is fun. Maybe I just want to pump up my bicep. Or I want to pump up my chest today. And training should be fun as well. So if you're tracking your first movement and making progress, then after that, you're just having fun in the gym. That is a good way for myself to go about it at least. I find that really works and that's fine. I make progress through that. When you're tracking your things as well, you need to have a form of periodization. As a natural guy myself, I am not walking into the gym because I just want to have a good pump or I want to have a bigger chest or I want to have bigger legs. No, no, for myself, that is useless. I don't want to look like a guy that lifts, but I can't even lift anything. I find that to be completely useless. This is the best form of periodization that I find works the best for myself. And at the same time, it's making myself stronger as well. I used a bit of a lower rep range and here's a great example. You can get stronger, you will also build muscle with it. If you already understand periodization, you can skip this time frame right here. This is the exact formula that I've been using that I think works the best for myself and many of my clients. And here it is. We're starting off with three times five. Meaning you can do either three sets, five repetitions, or you can do five sets with three repetitions. The following week, we'll be doing four times four, meaning we're getting now 16 reps. The week after that, we'll be doing three times six, meaning now we're getting 18 reps. And the final week, we'll be doing four times five. Once you have completed your four times five, meaning 20 reps, you can now go back to square one, doing three times five, but we now increase the weight a little bit. The third thing that I think is super, super, super important is to actually master the basics. And when I'm telling you to master the basics, it's basically mastering as many movements as you can and keeping them very simple. Like it's the simple things that actually works long term. It's about doing the simple things consistently every single day. That is what gives you the most amount of progress. It's not about doing the fancy things. Yes, the fancy things are fun and sometimes we should just walk into the gym with the mindset of having fun. But at the same time, you're not really making progress that way. And one of the things when it comes to mastering the basics as well is trying to do the least amount of work with the maximum amount of results that you can do. Basically what that is, is that you're trying to do just as much as you can today so you can become better the next day. If you're trying to bust your balls every single time, most likely you won't be able to recover from that. And that is very stupid. Now, this actually works for people who are probably on performing enhancing drugs. And it will work for people that are natural as well. It will work for everyone, but it's going to work way more for people that are performing enhancing drugs. And the reason it works more that way is because they have the ability to recover much faster. Saying that, it is a very stupid thing to do, bust your balls consistently, if you're trying to make progress, because you won't be able to recover. So you're always as good as you recover. If you can't recover, you're not making progress. As simple as that. Unfortunately, in today's society, we always think about the art of looking great in the mirror and that is kind of what social media is portraying. That is actually limiting us specifically as natural guys because eventually we'll hit that body composition or we'll get to that stage where we feel like, ah, oh, it's almost freaking impossible for us to actually get better. And I mean, we can always get better looking, However, it's really, really freaking hard. And the amount of progress that you do for putting in so much work is so minuscule. That is when we can start thinking about other factors than just this thing about looking great in the mirror. Actually thinking more about performance, looking more about strength and mobility. Thinking about these three is something that I wish I would have done from day number one. If I were to prioritize these three things rather than focus on just looking great in the mirror because I'm insecure, I would have made so much more progress. I would have been stronger, more flexible, more durable, probably looking even better and I would have more of a purpose to begin with. So try to prioritize these three things rather than just looking good and going in for a good pump and getting a bigger bicep. So I think that is something that I wish I would have done from day number one as well. 
And the last one, the last one of them all. No matter how hard you train, no matter how good your plan is, no matter how much you're following periodization, you will never get there if your sleep, your nutrition and your hormonal profile are shit. You need to take care of these three things. If these three things become way better than your actual training itself, you will make so freaking much progress. It's like crazy. If you focus upon these ones, you will make progress so freaking fast. And that is 100%. You can't outwork these things. People keep saying it all the time, but it's 100% true. So you need to optimize your nutrition. Myself, I'm following a 40% protein intake, 30% fat, 30% carbs. That seems to work the best for myself to optimize my hormones. But on top of it, I feel like I have enough energy to go through my workouts and I get enough protein to actually be able to recover. Maybe even get too much protein. But also keep in mind, everyone's completely different and this is the macros that works the best for myself. But you might not work good on these macros and it all depends on the body type, the genetics, the epigenetics. It is very different from individual to individual. So you have to try these things for yourself to see what actually works the best for yourself. Speaking of those things as well, it's the one thing that is super important is to optimize your hormones. Okay, I can't stress this enough. I will make more videos on how you can actually optimize your hormones in the future. More about nutrition as well but hope you got some valuable information from this little conversation today. So thank you everyone, have a great day.